and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our English news edition coming to you from Canal Algérie. I'm your host, Naysa Douma, to the headlines. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, congratulated in a tweet our national football team on the victory against Cameroon with a goal to none in Japuma Stadium. The Desert Warriors achieved a precious victory against Cameroon in the first leg of the qualifying round for the 2022 Qatar World Cup. Lieutenant General Saeed Shingriha, Chief of Staff of National People's Army, received the Director of the Federal Service for Military and Technical Cooperation of the Russian Federation, Dmitry Shugayev. And the Spanish political class is criticizing the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's position. The International Book Fair Sila opens its doors for book lovers after two years in the presence of Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman and the participation of 36 countries. Those are today's headlines. First in our news, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, congratulated our national football team on the victory against Cameroon with a goal to none in Japuma Stadium in Douala. The President of the Republic tweeted, quote, You performed and you made us happy. You were always leaders and you still are. We will all celebrate from Blida, inshallah. End of quote. The Desert Warriors achieved a precious victory against Cameroon and took a huge step towards World Cup qualification after they edged out Cameroon in Japuma Stadium with a goal to nail in the first leg of the qualifying ground for the 2022 Qatar World Cup. The single goal of the match was scored by Islam Slimani in the 40th minute. After the game, the national football team coach Jamal Belmadi attended a press conference during which he stressed on the efforts of his players throughout the game and their unity, even though the task was not easy. Answering to a question of a Cameroonese journalist about statistics of the two teams' confrontations and first defeat of Cameroon since 1998, Riyad Mahrez answered. Personally, I've seen these statistics before the game, like everyone, and it didn't affect me at all. You know, I believe in work, I believe in moment, momentum, and I think we worked very good. I think it was, we were ready, 100% ready, and um, the stats is the stats, you know. One day you have to, to break the stats, break the records, it's part of football. So when we arrived here, we was confident even about Japoma. I've heard a lot of things that we don't want to play in Japoma, we, we don't like this stadium. We love this stadium, like I said before the, before the game. We're not superstitious, you know, we, we take game by game. Today we come here with our, our strength, with our, with our team, with our ambition, and we, we did a very good game. And I think we deserve to win. But like I said, there's another, another battle at home, another game, and we have, to, we have to do more than today to beat them. Thousands of Algerians across the national territory took to the streets to celebrate the victory of our national football squad. This win is the first official win in Algeria's history against the Cameroonian team. <laughs>
Lieutenant General Saeed Shangri, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, received on Monday at the headquarters of the High Command of the National People's Army, Director of the Federal Service for Military and Technical Cooperation of the Russian Federation, Dmitry Shugayev. Lieutenant General Saeed Shingriha, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, received an audience Friday, March 25th, at the headquarters of the High Command of the National People's Army. Dmitry Shugayev, Director of the Federal Service for Military and Technical Cooperation of the Russian Federation, in the presence of General Officers of the High Command of the National People's Army and the Ministry of National Defense, the Ambassador of the Russian Federation to Algeria, and the members of the Russian delegation. This meeting comes at the end of the visit of the Russian delegation to Algeria from 23rd to 25th of March 2022 to take part in the work of the ordinary meeting of the Algerian-Russian Intergovernmental Committee, which was held yesterday, March 24th, 2022, at the National Army Circle in the First Military Region. During this meeting, the two sides held discussions on the state of the military cooperation between the two countries and exchanged analyzes and views on issues of common interest. At the end, the two parties proceeded to an exchange of symbolic presents. The Minister of Culture and Arts, Soria Muluji, chaired the opening of the cultural program of the 25th edition of Algiers International Book Fair in the presence of the Italian Foreign Affairs Minister in charge of culture and as Italy as guest of honor. According to Soria Muluji, Sila is an opportunity for Algeria and Italy to strengthen their bilateral and cooperation ties. The publishers were also delighted to finally meet with readers and, the pre and present their works. It was a great opportunity to renew discussions about book policy. The details with Rania El Bahri. After two years of absence due to the health crisis, the International Book Fair SILA returns for its 25th edition with the participation of 1,250 national and foreign publishing houses. L'oxygène. The Algerian book publishers and importers took a breath of fresh air. They are delighted with the comeback of this major cultural event. We salute the decision of the President of the Republic for the promotion of this fair, in particular the fact that we were given free stands. It's an immense pleasure to reconnect with reading. We are trying to reconnect with our old traditions and we welcome all these initiatives, in particular the free stands, which has been very much appreciated by the publishers. We hope that we can renew the discussions about the book policy and about the aid that would be necessary for this sector to regain a little more magnitude. The program of this rich event was marked by numerous roundtables on literature as well as sign-in sessions. The Spanish political class is criticizing the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's position. The Spanish Deputy Prime Minister reminded her country's Prime Minister with proof that his decision is anti-constitutional and contrary to the UN's resolutions. Manel Ammari with the details. Spanish citizens continue to show their solidarity with the Sahrawi Republic and people following the Spanish Prime Minister's unexpected U-turn on the Western Sahara issue, a shameful position that violates international law. The former head of the Spanish government and former head of the popular party, José María Aznar, criticized his country's new position on the Sahrawi issue calling it a historical error and a dangerous carelessness. The head of government, Pedro Sánchez, sent a message of weakness to Morocco. It is a historical error and we will pay the price. This decision affects Spain's historical responsibilities towards Western Sahara. The decision to support the so-called Moroccan autonomy plan in Western Sahara, taken without consensus or debate, is an unforgivable mistake. In a radio broadcast, the Spanish Deputy Prime Minister Yolanda Diaz called Pedro Sánchez's position as anti-constitutional 
and a violation of the Spanish Constitution and the United Nations resolutions. Traído aquí, eh, bueno, habla literalmente de que las... This decision is contrary to the UN's resolutions, which clearly state that the two parties have to find a fair solution that leads to the Sahrawi people's self-determination. As you can see, this resolution does not mention autonomy, but self-determination. In the Spanish streets, social organizations, popular movements and solidarity groups continue to express their support of the Sahrawi people and continue to challenge and denounce Sanchez's new position, adding that they regard his statements as a serious mistake which does not represent the Spanish people, recalling that their country has supported Western Sahara for years and that they fully support Western Sahara in their struggle for independence. A big demonstration is planned for this Saturday in Madrid, with the participation of various Spanish political parties and organizations. The president of the Spanish Coordination of Solidarity with the Sahrawi People recalled in a statement for the Algerian television that Spain has a historical and moral responsibility towards the Sahrawi people. We are in front of the Spanish Ministry of Foreign Affairs to express our solidarity with the Sahrawi people and recall our historical, political and moral responsibility in the Sahrawi file. Let us remember one very important thing. The only solution to the conflict between Morocco and the Sahrawi Republic is that proposed by the United Nations. And a referendum on self-determination has never been considered as a solution in this conflict. For his part, the Spanish journalist Miguel Mora Diaz made this statement. The socialists' argument is that this decision will guarantee peace concerning the immigration issue in Ceuta and Melilla for good, which is not correct. These are problems for the Spanish government since there are no guarantees that Al Mahzen will well manage this issue. It is a political scandal. The Moroccan movement Al Adl Wal Ihsan declared that the acceleration of the pace of normalization between Morocco and the Zionist entity represents a real threat to the Kingdom of Morocco more than it does for Palestine. That was it for our news edition. Thank you for tuning in to our program. Good night. <laughs>